I'm good, man. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, I think we last met in China, weirdly, at the Macau Film Festival. <laughs> oh, that seems like a lifetime ago. Oh, no, it really does. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll just begin by saying, I mean, In the Earth is already one of my favourites of yours. I just love the film. And I think I love really how um, you make art and movies that really inspire you and clearly challenge you as a storyteller. I'm just, I'm just wondering, is, is this ability to try new things in part down to the success of your previous movies, to have that kind of faith put in you and established audiences in place? Does it, does it give you that freedom to kind of be as experimental as you are here? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it's also kind of the willingness to work at um, more modest budgets as well. So, you know, I, I think that's hand in hand with um, the more experimental stuff, you know, that as long as you, you know, if it's set up so that you know that you're going to get a return on it, then everyone, everyone relaxes, you know, it's a, if you make, if you make come um, in the earth for $60 million, then people would be scared. <laughs> <laughs> what, what attracts you to the woods? I mean, it's, I guess there's something primal, I guess, about being out there and um, sort of falling back and relying on human instincts, but it's obviously always been such a, a good stomping ground for horrors. But what, what takes, what takes you there as a storyteller? Yeah, I think it is that it's the primal thing of it, that it, it's an environment that is dangerous if it, you know, um, and I lived near woods when I was a kid and it, that they always stuck with me. Um, and there's, yeah, I, I, I've always felt like this kind of thing of being slightly dislocated in terms of you. I always think about the old, the, 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 the version of myself that's um, through history. And I feel that, you know, the idea of the, the, being in the modern world is kind of slightly an illusion and it could be taken away at any moment and you which is kind of what the what the um covid situation kind of brought back that your life can be radically simplified quite quickly <laughs> you have to kind of it's like a whiplash and you have to kind of work out where you are you know and it's um and i, and I think that kind of yeah the, definitely that as, a, as also as a slightly um, useless urban person, I don't think I would last very long left to my own devices in the wood, you know. No, but that well, no, that's takes me to the next question because I love the character of Martin. Because usually in films like this, us audience audience members cling on to the protagonist as a kind of emblem of hope, a figure we can kind of put our faith in to help guide us out of this hellhole. But he's quite pathetic, and I, I mean that in an endearing way because he's extremely relatable. He's he manages as well as I would in that situation. Yeah. Uh, did you have fun with that character and kind of subverting those tropes? Yeah, well, that was the idea that I would I based him as much on my reactions as possible and 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 my own uselessness. And um, but also I was looking at like 50 sci-fi and thinking about that kind of quite tough science, the scientist character who can solve every problem and leads the story always, you know, and it, with his girlfriend, with the A-line skirt and the, and the soldier, which are the, the three mainstays of those movies, you know, and to take that and then make it more modern. Um, but the idea being that basically that of all the each of the characters can't perform outside of their area of expertise, you know, so. When you've got a scientist who spent a year and a half indoors, unsurprisingly, they're useless when it comes to being outside. Um, but then the Alma character, who is a, um, you know, works in the woods as a ranger, she's good at working in the woods as a ranger. It's not like a sudden leap up of skills that she has. She, she's already there, you know. Yeah, I, I was going to speak quickly as well about Joel Fry. He's brilliant, isn't he? In this, I mean, he's not really been given the opportunity to have many leading roles like this yet in cinema. Um, but I think he just he was superb in, in the leading role. But what did you see in him that that made him your Martin? Well, I worked with him. We both did our first jobs together like donkeys years ago, and and I've always kept an eye on him and seen what he's been up to. But yeah, I just think he's a kind of he's he's such a realistic performer and and a sympathetic performer. I think he could do anything, basically. I mean, I, I'm sure he's going to make more of a name for himself in the rom-com kind of area after the Cruella stuff. But I think he could be, you know, Bond. Yeah. yeah. Joel Fry for Bond. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get a campaign started. Um, and also, I'm talking of, of great collaborators. I mean, Reese is one of the best writers in the country, never mind actors. It must be yeah. so great for you to collaborate with someone like that because he's not just an actor signing up to a project. I mean, he is in some ways, but I, what I mean is creatively, he's very much an equal. He's also got this kind of genius mind. Does it, does, yeah. it, it must be quite good to have someone like him around he's as well. He's not an equal. He's far beyond being an equal <laughs> to me. Jesus Christ. I mean, he's, ter he's terrifying sending a script to him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I just... You know, I watch his, I watch Inside Number Nine and quake and go, oh God, I can't believe they've. I mean, the one that kills me, well, 
there's the there's the one that's in rhyming couplets, which I was like, oh, I can't believe they did that. But then it's the crossword one really gets me and just go, that's so hard. It's all so hard to write like that. And it's like giving him when I give him the sides for something like in the earth, I feel like I'm passing him over a piece of paper written on with crayons or something, you know. So uh, but that's why I get him in, because he he kind of elevates any any bit of script you know far beyond it deserves so he's uh he's terrific and his kind of understanding of horror is is huge yeah well i guess the way i was speaking to him about it before is that 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 timing of i mean horror and comedy go hand in hand don't they i mean the way you i mean he's always blended the and, and moved between genres seamlessly but if, uh, do, do, do because you have often gravitated towards comedic actors to play out horror is that because of their ability to judge timing so well yeah it's that and it's that they've got you know, they know how to make people laugh. It's not a stretch for them to do that. And sometimes you need to leaven horror with comedy just to make it a bit more palatable across the thing. And I, and I believe that characters should be, that part of their makeup is a sense of humour as much as anything. So it's good to see that side of it. But also there's a slightly haunted look of um, uh, from comedy actors as well, because they've been there, they, they've done that thing of like confronting the audience, you know, eyeball to eyeball and, and it's, gone well or it's not gone well you know and I think that kind of those, those things are all part of their makeup and performance and I, I was reading before that you've said filmmaking is a muscle um I was wondering because you obviously wrote this in the midst of of the the COVID pandemic of course did, did you feel like in some ways you needed to be working to kind of flex that muscle because it could in other because I mean you are quite a prolific uh filmmaker you do you, you make a lot of stuff um and is, is, is there a sense of if you don't do anything for a while you can get rusty is, is that why is that what drives you to keep to keep doing stuff it's partially that but also you know I'm not getting any younger either so there's not really you, you've got to keep working otherwise these could be the last years that you're working into not even not not in a kind of really morbid way but just in a you know the industry might not want to work with you anymore you know so I think it's um and also as a as an independent filmmaker you it's up to you to make your own opportunities and if you if you're not making them there's no one out there that's going oh I wonder what Ben Wheatley's up to you know they, you know, they'll be just going with the whoever's like you know been successful in the papers last week you know so it and that's why I've made that many movies because I'm always developing stuff and trying to trying to make stuff well the more you make the better as far as I'm concerned because I always enjoy what you do but thank you so much Ben for speaking to me today and best of luck with the release of the film Cheers, man thank you ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey, you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies it is indeed, yeah. nice Hey, you know.